Welcome, guys. It's... It's... Wednesday! There we go. So, it's one of the days I can go out using my... FM Pass. Have I been out? No. It's been overcast all day today. So join me on my vlog about buying land. Yesterday I posted a vlog regarding uh, an increase in houses on the market for sale uh, which uh, yeah you can you can understand why in this time uh, and uh, predicament uh, but I also noticed that there is a big increase in uh, land for sale so today I'm just going to be covering off some bits of land now Six months ago, I posted um, some uh, pictures of land for sale around the Davao region, and there was about eight or nine. Today, there's 31 I'm going to post different uh, different pieces of land, and they range from 800,000 pesos, okay, for about 200 square meters, up to 2 million, to 2 million three hundred thousand pesos for about 500 square meters now there are some plots of land that you can buy in Davao that are more than this a lot more uh, and I don't profess to turn around and put all that information onto this vlog I'm just going to concentrate on the 800,000 to two and a half million okay that's where we're going to sit today we ain't going outside of that we're not doing anything else. we're going to keep within that parameter and at the end of the video, watch it to the end, I'm going to turn around and do a small piece about foreclosure. Okay, because that is really interesting. Okay, so first things first, La uh, buying land. So you can find land uh, by going out looking at it and you'll see a little sign up turn around saying this is for sale uh, now there are just a couple of things you need to understand about land you can buy land here and it will have a wooden house on it the house has no intrinsic value to the land it might be a sorry sorry store it might be a heart it might be a carpool it might be something it doesn't give you any right to build on that land you need to make sure that you're actually buying residential land, not commercial. Okay, so that's point one. Uh, point two is that when you're buying the land, you need to make sure the fixed boundaries of what the land is and where it is, and that that has actually been recorded. Now, what happens is they have these little concrete posts like this that get put into the ground and uh, they should be renumbered and they should be recorded on a land register however some people here will actually make this and put it in and tell the unsuspecting buyer well it runs from that corner to that corner to that corner to that corner and then when you buy the land you find that you're in dispute with other people that own land because they, they might say that it's 150 square meters when really it's only 100 square meters okay so that's number two number three the value of the land at the present the uh, estate agents and the relators and the uh, uh, websites uh, property 24 or Le Mude or the banks are all saying that land okay land is around 7,000 pesos a square meter and it's gone down 741 pesos in the last 12 months now I'm looking at websites and websites are turning around and saying that it's 11,000 pesos to buy a square meter of land 
and I'm seeing websites like on Somal with the Kibuli estate, which is a subdivision, and they're selling land at 8,000 square, uh, 8,000 pesos a square meter. So the Kibuli estate on Somal is closer to the mark than some of these other guys. So what they're doing is these people are saying it's 11, you'll turn around and go in and say, well, the market's saying seven. So there's 3,000 peso dis discrepancy to talk about and negotiate. The buyer wants the top end, uh, a seller wants the top end, sorry, and the buyer wants the bottom end. Uh, for me, I would turn around and say, well, it's seven is the top end, put a bid in at 5,000 pesos a square meter, take it or leave it, and then just walk away from it. Uh, because as a long nose, oh, sorry, as a foreigner, they'll turn around and bump the price up because they see you as being ATM, all that money, yeah? So go in low and hard and don't move because there is a lot of land coming on the market at the moment in Dava. And I'm just talking small plots here. I'm talking 100 square meters up to around 500 square meters. You know, the largest piece of land I saw for sale today, and I'm gonna post a picture of it, uh, is 1,700,000 pesos for 11 hectares. That's what it's advertised at. I bet you if you go there, it will be 1,700,000 square meters uh, per square meter or per hectare, which means it's gonna be, that's a hectare price, times that by 11, and you're gonna be looking at around about 19 million pesos for that plot of land. And that is the key here, is that it is a little bit deceptive and skewed how they put their advertising out. Uh, now, the next point, uh, when you're reading the advert, okay, sometimes you'll see the advert without any prefix like the peso sign, and there might not be a peso sign at the other end. It'll just say 340, or it'll say 150, or it'll say 250, or it'll turn around and say 600, okay? Now, you need to be very, very wary of that person, because that person is a crook. <laughs> That's all I can turn around and say. Because when you turn up, they'll turn around and say, you'll be perceiving that it's a peso price. And it's not. It most probably be a dollar price or a sterling price, depending on your nationality. If they find out your nationality and you turn up, it won't be a peso price, it'll be a dollar price. So 50 pesos to the dollar, do your maths, goes crazy. 63 pound, uh, pesos to the pound, do the maths, it goes nutty. That piece of land becomes a very, very expensive piece of land. So you need to be very wary of that. And as I said in my video yesterday, get a solicitor, get an attorney, put them on the table and get them to turn around and cross all the T's Filipino style. Don't try and wing it guys. Do it Filipino style because you need to know what your boundaries are of that land. You need to know the taxes have all been paid. You need to know that there is a clean title to that land. You need to know that the land is not part of a mother title. Now a mother title is where a plot of land, say um, uh, 1,000 square meters, has been divided into 10 lots and they're selling 10 lots. So the mother title is on the 1,000 square meters and you're buying a tenth of the mother. You need that in writing because what they turn around and say, oh, you can deal with that after you've purchased it. No, 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 no. You can't deal with bugger all once you've turned around and purchased it. Once you've purchased it, you own it. You are legally responsible. You are legally uh, held accountable by the law, by the police. And if you are going out with a Filipino or married to a Filipina and you buy that land, you as a foreigner will be the one that will take the brunt. Everybody, all the nine other people in that little plot will come to you to get money from you because they don't have any money 
they'll all turn around and profess to be broke when they're not broke. Because if they were broke, they wouldn't be able to afford land, would they? So be very careful. I'm being quite harsh here, but I think you have to be harsh to turn around and have a, 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 a realisation that you can get yourself into some really hot water here. Uh, and if you jump into hot water, you end up getting scalded. And if you end up getting scalded, you'll need hospital treatment. Here, you'll end up needing a judge and a solicitor and an attorney, and you'll be selling the land to pay for your legal fees. And somebody else will turn around and pick up the land for cheap. So be very careful, guys. So they're the points I've got. Now, some of the pictures you're going to see today are in subdivisions. As I mentioned before, subdivisions carry a management fee. You need to understand what that management fee is per the plot yeah once you put a house on it the management fees go up because you've made it a residential plot once you buy one you know when you buy a plot of land in a subdivision and they're feeding goats and chickens on it it has no value it's just a piece of land isn't it when you turn around and put a two-bedroom house on it that's nicely designed all of a sudden that goes up another level and there are incremental steps in management fees within subdivisions that you have to pay for to cover off what you're doing yeah i mean it's like just digressing slightly if you buy a condo you don't pay the electricity at the at the local davao light rate which is about nine and a half to nine point eight pesos a kilowatt you pay the condominium rate which could be 15 to 20 pesos so the management will be making five or six pesos per kilowatt off of you for your property, for your condominium. Bit of a, yeah, bit of a no-brainer really. Keep it sweet, keep it clean and keep it legal. So the land, uh, so that's what it is. Now, I've got a list of the land and the land is going from outside to over near uh, Kalinan, to Turil, to Bankal, to Tolomo, to uh, Pu'an, to uh, Tabuk, uh, to uh, Tunakan, sorry if I've pronounced that incorrectly, to Sasa, there's a whole range of the properties that I've picked up and I'm going to post today and I'm just going to put the prices underneath like I did yesterday and you can actually have a look at the land. Now where I gleaned this information from was I, again I agree, uh, gleaned it from Lamudi but I also uh, gleaned it from Property24 uh, and I also uh, Dabawena real estate or real relator uh, website as well so that's property that's on the, you know, their lots or their land as I said you can buy bigger and you can buy now the other thing that you can do with lots here is that you can borrow money to uh, buy the lot. Now you can buy the, buy it a couple of ways. The first way is that you can pay cash, spot cash, and get a harder discount. The next way is you won't get any flexibility on discount, which is that you put a deposit down to secure it, which is about 25,000 pesos, uh, and then you turn around and have to pay a 25% of the value of the lot. So if the lot is, uh, say, 800,000, you would have to pay 200,000, 250,000 pesos to secure that lot. And then the rest can be put into a loan. Now that loan could be got from, uh, what's it called? Uh, PAG Big, or BDO, or Union Bank, or Bank of Commerce, or China Bank, yeah? and they will incur around 6%, some even go as high as 14% interest on those loans. Uh, some of the banks will want you to pay the loan back in either five, seven, or nine years, whereas others will let you go as a normal mortgage, you know, a normal mortgage rate between 10, 15, 20, and 25 years, okay? So if you can afford to pay for 800,000, you can afford to pay 30, 35,000 pounds a month, 35,000 pesos a month, then you can con concentrate your payments into 
and getting the interest free. Now the other route you can take is if it's a private buyer, you can make a 25% deposit on the land. So if it's 800,000, you can pay 200,000 down, yeah? And then over a period, you agree with the buyer, say two years, you can pay a monthly payment to pay off the rest of that interest, that payment without interest, okay? Now it's legally binding uh, and it goes through the legal channels. It just means that the person selling the land is asking a little bit more money because that's where he wants to make his profit margin, okay? Because the land price should be around five to seven, he might be asking 11,000 square meter. And if you're comfortable to pay interest free over that period of time, then you can buy that piece of land, okay? Now the third option, um, not a really good option, but, uh, but people, people do do it. People do 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 it. Uh, they will turn around and pay their 25 secure it. Then they will turn around and put down their deposit and leave themselves 600,000 to pay off. And they will either put it on a credit card or they'll go to a loan shark and they'll borrow money. And that money then will turn around and pay the, the payments while you're saving. So you're pa using that money you've loaned to make the payment rather than make the payment. And then, so what you do is you make the payment and then you then use your money to continue that payment to the end. Um, and then what you've loaned is what you borrow against. Complicated? Yes. Risky? Very, very risky. Uh, what I've heard and what friends of mine have said is that they take out a second credit card to pay the payments and then go down the line, they get a third credit card to make the payments. So all of a sudden they've got three credit cards that are maxed out and they've got a piece of land because their foresight is to get that piece of land. So uh, yeah, not clever, uh, but that's that route. So that's the land. I'm going to post those pictures and I'm going to put that.
foreclosure on property. Now, as of the 17th of November, this is yesterday, uh, there were, there was, there was an auction held here in Davao. Now, I don't know whether it happened, but it's on the website and it's on the Pagabig website. And they were auctioning off land, houses, condominium, and businesses. Okay, so land, there was 27 plots of land up for auction, ranging between 980,000 pesos to 4 million pesos. Okay, houses, there were houses ranging from 800,000 pesos up to 29 million pesos. So there's bits I'm just gonna cover at a moment because I'm doing land today and I did houses yesterday. I'm not doing businesses uh, and I'm not doing restaurants or condominiums because that's later a day. That's the first time that I've actually seen that site. And it's a government site. Uh, and in it were properties that have been repossessed or foreclosed or taken back by the bank and the banks that were there were BDO, Union Bank, uh, China Bank and Pagbig, Pagbig. They were the four big contributors to that website. Uh, I don't know whether it happened, I've sent an email off today asking if, there, if the, because it was a new lockdown yesterday, there wasn't going to be lots of people going to an auction. I don't know whether they carried, did it online or whatever it is. But you can go onto the Pagabig website and you can find this. There's no pictures of the property. There is the address. And what you have to do is you have to go to that address, check it out. Then you have to get a solicitor to turn around and look at all the things I've said. Clean title, taxes paid, what the boundaries are of the land that you're purchasing before the auction happens. When you go to the auction, it's cash. There are no loans, okay? It's cash for the property. Now, some of the properties, you will assume, that's the thing, some of the properties, the banks will want you to assume the already agreed contract of monthly payments for that property. Now, I don't have any pictures for this, and that's why I put it at the end, okay? All you get is a little square uh, thumbnail and it's got Pagabig foreclosed properties and then a little bit of a boundary and it says auction November 2020 uh, and you go on there you've got the reading matter you get a, you get like a map and you can go and have a look I only found it yesterday so I didn't have time to go and have a look because I wasn't allowed out so uh, it's there it's another avenue now the prices are put there non-negotiable that's what the banks want to clear the debt okay uh, so another option is looking at property now a lot of the property right there i took some notes a lot of the properties are in Tagbuk, Tuacan, Kapitian uh, Elena Heights, uh, Catalan de Grande, Palm Village, Ecoland Phase 2, Baguio Galleria, Susanna Homes, Palm Ridge, and there's one more there that I cannot read in my writing. See, I, my writing's garbage. So there are a lot of places there. So deposit you can't put a deposit down you just have to pay a holding deposit before you organize the cash to come in but it's always going to be there uh, it's you can get the assumes over 5 10 or 15 years whatever the previous owner has actually agreed uh, it's all in pesos nothing else um, and the square meterage uh, as of yesterday of our house is 50,000 pesos a square meter land is 11 as I said no negotiations on doing the auctions guys the auction guys are cutthroat they want all their money back because the person that's actually bought the house has maybe missed six months worth of payments or is unemployed or can't make the payments and gone back to their mom or they've just walked in and handed in the keys 
um, that's it so that's foreclosure so hopefully that gives you a little bit of a an insight um, if you're borrowing from the bank it's quite quite heavy on uh, interest rate uh, some of the subdivisions will turn around and cut you a deal of around six uh, percent interest on your loan uh, but they make that up with their management fees and all their other on costs yeah uh, but uh, but I'm going to show you some pictures of the land foreclosure if you're thinking of coming here as yesterday with the buy to the uh, rent to buy scheme that seems pretty good I think the foreclosure route seems pretty good because they've already got the deposit from the person that's given the house back so they don't they're not looking for you to make another deposit they just want you to take up the payments or make the payments on that on that uh, property uh, if you can get cash and pay it then it looks pretty good there are some very very nice estates there very very nice estates uh, or subdivisions uh, I wouldn't do uh, anything with Decker in front of it get rid of it uh, but I've not put anything from Decker in here so some of these estates some of these places are you know Elena Heights and Eco Lane Phase 2 and uh, Castellano Grande nice nice condominium nice uh, sorry subdivisions uh, the ready built house and again these foreclosures I've topped it at two million five but they start at six hundred fifty thousand peso for something that's maybe 40 square meters on a hundred square meters of land when you go into the subdivisions they will be talking 50 to 70 square meters of the of the, of the property and it will be on a hundred and fifty to two hundred square meters of land so you've got some places outside to park and you've got a little bit of place for the garden. There's a couple of places on here, 500 square metres. I'd be wary if they were 500 square metres, but they're up for auction. So that auction took place yesterday, uh, but I don't think it is. That's just me. Uh, it was advertised and it's still on the site at the moment and so you can check that. So anyway guys, from me on the balcony, giving information regarding buying land or this new thing, new avenue I found called foreclosure on properties. Take care, you look after yourselves. Have a good one. Like, share and subscribe. Mm -hmm.